Hey everybody, Danielle Hargenrader here. Welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Inner Diabetes Dominator. Today I have a very exciting international guest. John Scholand is the CEO and co-founder of Patients Pending Limited, a company created to help build innovative products for those with chronic conditions, in particular diabetes. John has lived with type 1 diabetes since the age of 4, and in 2009 gathered a team to create Timesolin, the company's first product, aiming to help solve daily anxiety in an easy-to-use way. John has completed the world's longest cross-country ski race, the largest organized bicycle race in the world, New York Half Marathon, and multiple triathlons. John lives with his wife, twin boys, and many Apple products in Stockholm. John, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Good, Good. pleasure. Good. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, no, my pleasure. So uh, we're going to start out like we usually do here and uh, ask you about your story of diagnosis, although I know we chatted a little bit. You were three. But uh, give us whatever you can kind of remember and uh, the path you traveled to get from three till now yeah well well thanks a lot for having me first of all um i think you know i I'm, when i'm thinking about your question i what's been interesting for me i was i was just before my fourth birthday so i don't really remember my diagnosis because i was so small uh, but now that i work in diabetes it's been a bit of a path for me to to uh to to kind of reflect and see pictures and and experience it from my parents point of view because as you mentioned i have young kids myself so you know i don't really remember a life without diabetes um i i've just always had it and and have been dealing with it but of, of course i have two older brothers they didn't have diabetes uh, and so learning to come to terms with it has been an important part of of my development from a, a little kid to a teen to an adult to uh to the the person i am today sure so yeah, so actually it's funny that you said that because uh, I've done a lot of personal development seminars in my life and it just reminded me of something you said is that uh, kind of to get a different perspective on something that you kind of uh, see as a pivotal moment in your life, you had to write the perspective of someone else that was involved and I kind of wrote the story of getting diagnosed with diabetes from my mom's perspective and you just said kind of, get, and that was such a an eye-opening experience. So I'm sure gaining that perspective from your own um, reflections has been has been an interesting one. Absolutely. Or you, something that just happened a couple of days ago I, I, in my, my Facebook feed or, or, or whatever it was, I saw this diabetes movie that's just come out called DX1, I think. And it tells the story of, of uh, it's a narrative of a, of, a, of a maybe seven or eight year old boy and his father. And it kind of shows the balance between parents and their kid. And it really is kind of, it's really touching. I mean, it really almost brings tears to your eyes when you can look at it from your parents' point of view and just seeing how how tough it must have been as a parent to have a kid with this stuff while you know growing up i never thought about that they just got on with it and i had happy parents and i did my thing but now when i as an adult i can look back and I just imagine boy it must have been must have been challenging for my parents i'm sure and then that's just something like you said when you're a kid you just don't have the capacity to really consider something um that deep but then i you know i have the, the same appreciation for my mom uh, my father passed away when i was young but just to know the inner strength that they have to have to kind of stay strong and show you that look life is okay you know you have this disease but you know everything's going to be fine so maybe just tell us a little bit you know us kind of maybe those of us that haven't been to sweden before what's uh, what's growing up in sweden like with or without diabetes well you know what i actually grew up in connecticut oh. so <laughs> I was born in Chicago, and uh, when I was about two, three, we moved to Connecticut, and so I lived in Connecticut until I was uh, 15 years old. Uh, so I'm, I have a Swedish family, I have dual citizenship, I spoke Swedish at home, but I, I grew up in Connecticut. Uh, so, and, and a big part of my diabetes in that time was, was going to the Joslin uh, diabetes camps. I, I, I think that was probably the most pivotal point in my journey with diabetes is that transition of starting to take care of it yourself yep. and how important those camps were to me um, in my development and, and even now I've, I've become reconnected with some of the people from camp both that were there as kids with me but also especially Paul Madden who was a guy who ran the camp and uh, that was probably the single most important thing that, that in, in my development of, of learning to take care of it by myself. Yeah, I think that's a huge point. We talk about this a lot on no matter who I'm interviewing, we talk about the power of community and just having that kind of comfort of knowing that somebody else is going through exactly the same thing that you are. And uh, I've kind of come into that later in life where when I was younger, I wanted nothing to do with camp, even though my mom suggested that I go. I was kind of an introvert. I was very kind of 
wanted to stay at home and not interact with other people. But now I go to diabetes conferences like two or three times a year. I have this show where I interact with people with diabetes. I'm heavy into the diabetes online community because it's just makes you feel part of something that, you know, because diabetes or any disease can be a very um, overwhelming or, you know, you can even feel alone. I know I felt alone for a lot of years, but now it's like, no, there's millions of other people out there. And if you reach out and interact with them, it just enriches your life. Definitely. Completely. Definitely. Yeah, and it's tough, you know, it, it, to be able to share share those experiences and, you know, see other 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 kids and see all the counselors had diabetes. And yeah, it was just such a cool experience. Yeah. So wonderful. I was going to ask you, I want to, so we want to talk about time slim. So obviously, you know, between being 15 in Connecticut, you went back to Sweden. Yes, because that's where you are now, right? And uh, so how did it, you know, how did you, were you always into product creation or what was the story behind the creation of Time Saloon? Yeah, so, well, there's a, that, that uh, it's a simple question, but there's actually a bit more to it because I, I didn't go, I did go back to Sweden when I was 15. Uh, but then after finishing university, I set, I was on a little bit of a journey. So over the last couple of years, I've, I've lived in South Africa for a couple of years, which is where I lived after university. I, I, I. I did some work about uh, entrepreneurship down there and how to help in the townships to to spur, get people to to solve their own problems through entrepreneurship. That led to a job down there, uh, and that job, which was within technology and and digital marketing, led me to go back to the U.S. I lived in New York a couple of years. I then moved to London, and now I'm back to Sweden again. So I've been back in Sweden for three years or so. Wow, so it's that's a bit of a journey. Good. Quite a journey, indeed. Yeah, I just yeah. visited London for the first time back in August, and although it was a lovely place to visit, I just can't even. I mean, I live in Philadelphia, which I believe to be a very busy, bustling city, but London was just, just so much going on, just it's so big. busy all the time. I mean, just too yeah, much. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> so, but so you know the the and the the, the thing is, is that I don't come from medical devices or the industry at all. I come from technology. Uh, and I come from from kind of big data analytics stuff, uh, but I, I I have this problem of using insulin pens, which I've used for for many years, and just having to sit around with my friends or my family or my 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 wife now, just going, have you seen if I took it? Uh, and this wasn't something that happened once in a blue moon. It happened quite a lot because, of course. We're busy with getting on with life, and you know I don't keep a logbook of my diabetes as no one else does. Uh, but the consequences of screwing this up, of taking a double dose, are serious, as we know. Uh, and so more often, you'd, you'd have situations where you hadn't taken it. But nonetheless, just too often going, did you see if I took it? I just got out of the shower, I was about to go to bed, and really don't want to take a double dose of Lantus. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at this, and and going back and forth and uh, coming up with ideas. And it was together with my, my brother, my brother Andreas, that we came up for the idea for this. Um, and we brought in a third guy who is a product developer. That was a, a friend of mine in New York City. And we put together this team and we developed this product called Timeslin. And Timeslin is a really, really super simple product. It's a cap that you put onto the insulin pen that you're already using that tells you when you last took your insulin. But I think the power of this thing is that it's very, very, very simple. And and we come, I come from technology. My brother has developed uh, developed software and, and products, and and he developed the, the the program called Skype, which is for you know IP calling. Yeah. And and why it's important is because Skype's easy to use, and that's why it became popular. And so we've tried to take this kind of thinking of we're not going to be making cutting edge, you know, we're not working to cure diabetes. We're not going to do the most cutting edge iPhone of diabetes stuff. We're trying to figure out how to make very, very, very simple products that don't add complexity, don't add extra steps, but make some of the decisions a little easier, make some of the decisions a little safer. And, and you can do that in pretty easy, easy ways. So that's how we came up with Thompson. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I actually, I mean, I, I would love to use it, but I, I've switched, I mean, 25 years of having diabetes. I was on manual daily injections for 22 of those 25 years. And I only switched to the Omnipod because I'm very athletic and I just wanted to have something. I really just wanted to experiment to see because I had never used the pump before because I didn't want one. Uh, but what I can relate to is how many times 
I injected or didn't. And I said, because you, I always try to bolus 24 or 20 minutes before a meal. And then I'd be like, did I get my insulin or not? And I couldn't remember. And like you said, the repercussions of that can be serious. If you, you know, bolus two or sure. four units and then you bolus two or four more units, that's, I mean, obviously, hopefully you'll be able to catch yourself going low, but that's a whole bunch of carbs that you're going to have to pile on. Or, I mean, God forbid, Lantus would probably be worse. Um, but certainly, uh, I think that that's a valuable tool for most people that are using pens. So it's just, you just stick the pen, the cap on, and it just starts a countdown. That's, it counts up. So it's it's yeah. simple, right? Here's a here's a Lantus pen, and it, and we replace the cap on it. So it's really simple. You take the cap off, you take your injection, you put it back on, and there's a little clock on there that counts up and says how many minutes or how many hours ago it was since you took it. That's pretty sweet. Uh, it's really simple, right? And you take your cap off anyway, you put it back on, so you're not adding a step to it. No. But what yeah. I think what's been interesting, you know, we started with just trying to solve my problem. So the first product was a Hannah Montana watch that we took apart and then we put it in to test it. The next one, we 3D printed it. And as we started showing it to more and more people, we said, oh, you know, wow, people are getting interested in this thing. Uh, and so now, now what I've seen is that uh, the largest study about this is by Novo Nordisk. And they say 93% of all people using insulin had a problem at least once in the last month, you know, when they took it. So, you know, my, my realization is that it basically happens to everyone. And of course, if you're doing this stuff four or five, six times a day, you're going to forget. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And like you said, most of us are just, we have a million other things going on. Our life doesn't completely revolve around when the last time we injected. So no, I Absolutely. love the simplicity of it. I think it's awesome. Is it now, I mean, I should have probably asked you this before, so I don't sound silly, but is this available for purchase now? Or what, what stages are we in here? It is. Uh, you know, we have a couple hundred thousand people using our product now, which we're really proud of. Uh, and for since the beginning of the year, it's now uh, available nationwide in the U.S. It's in Kmart. It's in Rite Aid. It's in thousands of independent pharmacies. So it should be, you know, it should be available in your local pharmacy. And if it's not, then we can get that pharmacy to bring it in. And what about uh, so. something like Amazon.com? Is it available on Amazon or is that or we're not there yet? Uh, I'm, so we have a partner that that manages the market for us, and so I'm not. I don't think they have it on Amazon. Uh, okay. I, they're they're they've been working hard to get it into the pharmacies where people go. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's where it's at. But uh, there, it's just coming online now, uh, and and we're we're they're about to make an announcement. I think next week of some other places where it's coming. Very nice. Well, that that's awesome, and I'm sure there are many many people that are going to be very already are very happy about it because it's, I have a quote. I can't remember where I heard the quote. Uh, I think it was a video that I was watching about the bionic pancreas, but someone was saying how insulin is the, or the diabetes is the only disease that has the medication that A, you need to stay alive, but B, if you take too much, will kill you. And yeah. you're like always walking this line like, oh, well, I hope I didn't take too much or I hope I didn't take too little, but I need it, but it could kill me. So this is like a very uh, helpful tool in that kind of staying out of the red zone. Uh, area so awesome so I want to ask you more from a from more of a I'm interested but I'm sure other people are interested too um, so obviously when you did because I read in your bio you did the longest cross-country ski race the largest organized bicycle race and multiple triathlons now is that just something that you have always been athletic or what was the what was the inspiration behind that I didn't win those okay I mean I'm, I I need to report back I didn't win unfortunately I, I mean personally I think just complete or honestly just getting into that that's that's a win I, I that's just me i'm a positive person but <laughs> no i mean i don't know the truth of it i so i grew up my father uh always did these races and and it's a swedish race it's the world's longest cross-country ski race it's about 60 miles long it's called the Vasaloppet. it's in northern sweden and my dad always we were so we were living in connecticut my dad was always training for these and he's done if i remember correctly 23 times wow. so i always remember as a kid him doing this and so one day we were just sitting on the table. I said, you know, I'm going to do it. And uh, I didn't put too much thought into it other than saying I was going to do it. How old were you when you said that? Mm, 18, 19, 20, maybe. Something plus minus a couple of years. I don't quite remember. Yeah. Something like that. But uh, uh, that's as advanced as it was with that first kind of. So I've, I've always played sports and done things like that. I've, I've been athletic, but but I haven't done those kind of endurance races. But that 
the way that I got into that first cross country ski race is pretty much the same way I've done all the other things. I've just seen something that looks interesting and I go register for it and I kind of, I'll figure it out later how it's all going to work. But okay. taking that first step is all it really takes. And I don't win the races. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not a crazy going for, you know, I just, uh, it's fun to, the, the biggest part is just training for it and getting in shape for it and being ready and showing that you can do it. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's how I've done it. So the, 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 the triathlons I've done, uh, the races, I've, the ski races, the bike races, that's it. I just kind of register and go for it. And, and at the moment, I, I know that you're into doing CrossFit. That's what I'm doing at the moment to try to stay, stay fit. And that there's a bit of a competitive element into that when you're just personally what you're trying to figure out how well you can do. So Absolutely. that's what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, and I think a uh, well, couple things that you said I want to kind of touch on is one is that, and I think this is a big point because um, I coach a lot of people on health habits, uh, and I think that a big thing that you said was the fact that you saw your dad doing it, and I think that that's a huge influencing factor on all of us is what we see our parents doing. So as you know, parents, um, whether you have diabetes or you have a child with diabetes, and as far as it's concerned, I mean, there's no doubt that exercise is a huge benefit to not only anybody that has diabetes the name in the world, but your kids are going to want to do what they see you doing. So, you know, you see dad doing it and you're like, huh, well, that, I could probably do that too. So I think that's a pretty big deal. And, um, you know, I, there, I don't even want to get into the diabetes CrossFit scandal thing. I'm not interested in talking about that. But for me, um, the, for CrossFit is it's you're trying to compete against yourself. And like you said, yeah. like that's a big for me, that's a big deal because you kind of have to check your ego at the door. You're not going to go in there and say, well, I'm going to beat, you know, this guy that's cool. I mean, at least I'm not going to beat the, the girl that's been doing CrossFit for, you know, eight years. I've only been doing it for about a year. But it's like, you know, you want to see if you can do better than you did last week or last month. So I think it's a really good way to compete against yourself and to kind of say, can I do better? And it's a fun way to stay competitive. And Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm with you. Cool. And so, it's very close to my office, which has the added convenience. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's convenient for me too because it's about 10 minutes away from my house. So I want to ask you about your experience, if any, to note um, of like blood sugar management while you're doing exercise. I mean, obviously a triathlon is insanely long. You're doing three different major exercise events. But even for doing something like CrossFit where, you know, it could last anywhere from five minutes to, you know, 30 minutes depending on the type of workout. What are your, I mean, what are your, experiences do you do anything special do you have any tips because i know I, i'm always giving different tips but i think that everybody's experience is different i think it's so individual and i think that's the really important thing and 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 the only way i've been able to figure it out is through practice uh, and i think that's such an important part of of it um a, a triathlon is a good example because you're swimming and then you're um you're biking and then you're running so it's pretty different it's different exercises and, and you're using different muscles and different lengths of time um and the only way to do it is 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 to practice and i've been most of the time it goes pretty well for me but of course my the last race i did which was stockholm triathlon it didn't really work i just couldn't get it in sync i came out of the water my blood sugar was quite low whether it was in the uh, 45 or 50 or something like that. And then it's, it's just hard to recover oh, after that. Oh, You're just yeah. constantly eating. You know, I'm really, I'm on my bike. I'm really stressed. I'm pushing the Dexcom thing every 20 yeah, seconds. It feels sure. like it's hard. Uh, and, if, and when it doesn't go right, um, uh, it, it, it messes things up. But my, my broader experience is, is actually, it's pretty surprising how, how little I find I need to adjust and accommodate for it. So CrossFit, which I'm doing now, I, I, I take the same amount of insulin. I don't adjust that at all. And all I do is I try to eat a little bit before if I need to. But most of the time, I don't. Yeah. Uh, and the, the tricky thing I have is that when we're just doing kind of cardio stuff, it's fine. I stay pretty flat. But then if we're doing something which is, is really intense, then my blood sugar starts to spike. And then it'll come down a while later. Yeah. And I just don't know how to predict when that's going to happen or really what to do. So I just kind of let it happen. So yeah, that's uh, interesting because I have a similar experience. So for me, uh, I have to, and I do, I do this almost every time. And depending on 
the workout, but if it's going to be a very intense workout, which it usually is, and there's heavy weights being lifted and it's less cardio, I set a 95% temporary basal increase on my, which is a lot because I only get half a unit an hour. So it means I'm pushing it up to almost an entire unit per hour because like you said, I have the same reaction with heavy, intense weightlifting where the blood sugars just start skyrocketing. But if it's cardio, I suspend all insulin delivery altogether because if I don't, then I drop really fast. And it's, it's, I would say it's predict predictable to almost a T. Obviously, there are some variables depending on when I ate. But since I go at the same time, it's usually that's not very uh, variable. But yeah, it's like it's whether it's cardio, it's drop. If it's high intensity weightlifting, it's rise. Um, and I do adjust insulin for that. So it's, it's always interesting to hear other people's experiences. And I yeah. like to tell people, you know, don't, I think you should listen to what other people do to just get ideas. But like you said, it's always going to depend on trial and error for yourself. Diabetes is not a by the books disease. I always tell people that there's no book that's going to say, okay, you need to do X, Y, and Z in order it's to. Not. It's just not. You have to figure out as an individual what's going to work best for you every time. And yeah, usually I, if you do the same thing, you'll get into a rhythm. I think the one thing I'd maybe say is it's, it's hard. I think it's really hard to say, you know, take an extra two units here or increase your basal rate by 95% or whatever it is. And that's what only I, because I found that out through trial and error. I'm not saying that's going to work for anyone else. Please, right. I don't, let me put that disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, but what I do think is important is to have the – to, to try to get the confidence because I you know often you're in a group or you're in a pool with other people, but to have the confidence to stop and test, to stop what you're doing if you have to, so you can eat. And you know, it's no fun when you're in a little group of people and then people are going for it and then all of a sudden you need to stop or you need to leave or you need to do, but you, you just, you have to. And so trying to get the confidence to own this stuff and say, you know, even though it's not fun and people are going to ask and all these things, I actually need to test or I need to stop what I'm doing because I'm getting low and doing that instead of trying to power through it. I think that's important. I think it's hugely important. And I think that, I mean, one of the first things I did when I joined my CrossFit box was I told them that I have diabetes. I said, I'm controlled. I, you know, I have a Dexcom lucky. I'm lucky to have the technology, but you know, I carry glucose packets like wherever I go. And I actually have my Dexcom receiver and I have, this is a lid to my water bottle. So I kind of stick a little paper towel in the side here and I stick this in the top of my water bottle and I just carry the water bottle around so that no matter where I am, I can just, you know, push this and kind of check in. But I mean, I wear my Dexcom receiver on my arm. Everybody in CrossFit knows that I have diabetes and that's exactly yeah. what it says. Like I don't have any you have to not feel shame. Like you said, confidence. It's the, that's part of your experience. And, and most people think that you're pretty much a badass if you're out there exercising with diabetes. So don't be ashamed. It's true. But, but you know, it's uh, easier said, you know, that you're right. And that's what you should be doing. But it's not always that easy or that fun to have to do that. And a new group of people, you don't know, you're new to the gym, you're new to CrossFit, you're new to spinning or aerobics, whatever you're doing. And all of a sudden, you need to throw your hand up and say, you know, I've got this. I'm dealing with this. So it's not that easy always. And it's a struggle for, 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 for me and for many people to do oh, that. You I, just have to do it. I agree. It's definitely a struggle. Um, I guess I have this kind of – not that I don't care what people think attitude. And I guess this has come from me, my own personal transformation, where I spent many years of my life at 200 pounds in a whole – caring only about what other people thought about me to transforming into an athlete and thinking – if somebody has a problem with me taking care of my health, then that's a reflection on something that's going on inside of them. I've had right. that. So I, I have to admit, I know that it's difficult. It took me 10 years to. Oh, well, good for you. So, um, yeah, it takes time. But I think you just kind of have to throw that mentality out and just say, hey, if, if somebody has a problem with me checking my blood sugar, they probably have some serious, like, personal inner work that they need to do on themselves because it's not a reflection of who yeah, I am. You know, the, though the other side of that is I've never had, I've me never met a person that has a problem with it. Me neither. It's just, a, it's just for something that, you know, that you need to overcome yourself. Absolutely. Cool. So anything else? So I usually ask people, you know, if you've had any particular struggles that you've overcome, but obviously you've been a pretty athletic guy. I mean, is there anything with diabetes that, you know, because a lot of people, I know I had a hard time with it. I went through deep depression. I was very overweight when I was a mm. teenager. Um, did you have any struggles that you feel, you know, you perceive that you may have overcome or ones that you're still working on? Um, 
I wouldn't put it. In, uh, the answer is no. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've, I've had better times and worse times, and certainly as a teenager, I hated it. But I've kind of, I've just dealt with it. But I mean, I've, I've had challenges, and you know, I've lived in different countries. I've been backpacking in weird places without electricity and unsure what's going to happen if I lose my insulin. So I've put myself in some trying situations and probably, you know, now that I'm a little bit older, probably some pretty stupid situations <laughs> along the way. So I think those are the challenges I've had. They, they haven't really been so much uh, a, a personal challenges as I've really tried to test the boundaries uh, of what I can do. Uh, and I haven't really, there's, you know, flying a helicopter, getting a pilot's license is one thing, I, or a helicopter license is one thing I've, one, I've, I've tried to fly a helicopter and I failed unbelievably at it. So it's, but I know I can't get a license. And the other thing is climbing Mount Everest. I've just, I saw a TV show about it and I don't have an interest in doing it. And I don't think I could do it with diabetes, but that's about it. You know, so, awesome. so if that's the two things, that's a lot more. I mean, most other people have more than two things on their list so that, that's it so no, it's, I mean, it's really I, I don't win these races i don't necessarily finish first or climb highest but i i, I do things and it's just I, I i just decide i'm going to do it and i go try it and usually it works out just fine awesome and i i have a very similar mentality and i think that kind of just goes on the line of living with diabetes or not the only limitations that kind of we have on ourselves in life are the ones that we put on ourselves. And by, you know, putting yourself in those precarious situations, you know, I travel all the time inside, outside the country, um, whether, you know, I have extra medical supplies, but I don't know if I'm going to be able, you know, it's, you just kind of have to say, look, I have diabetes, but I'm not, it's not going to be the reason why I don't live my life to the fullest and don't let it be the reason. So yeah, no, I think you're a great example of that. So let's uh, let's wrap it. Let's come to a close and uh, let's get John's top three tips for thriving with diabetes for you. My, so my top three tips. Well, I think so. I, I, I I'm I'm not super active on social media, but I follow a bunch of diabetes groups to get a pulse of what's going on. And one of the things I can find quite frustrating is people will post pictures of their Dexcom or what's happening in, in Sweden and Europe is the, the Freestyle Libra. And people are posting graphs of what their diabetes looks like. And it's absolutely perfect at 83 all day long and nothing is going on. And I think it's quite frustrating to see that kind of stuff being posted because I can't be the only one that doesn't have a blood sugar at 83, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I know it's not the case. We're all, exactly, yeah. <laughs> we're all struggling with this stuff. And I think it's just really important to understand that everyone who has diabetes, no matter what they're putting up on their Facebook account, is just trying to do the best they can. Uh, and to not be too tough on yourself to think that 83 all day long is 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 the best it's important to not you know to have try to keep your a1c in check to try to eat well but striving for perfection is not where it's at okay. i like so it i think, Don't that, for perfection. I think that's a, a, an important part of it. the other one i mean we were spoken speaking about it but really i mean i'm not a very there's nothing really special about me but I, i've been able to travel and do sports and and, and i just 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 do it, right? And I, I think that's really the, the the conclusion that I have for, for diabetes. It really, with a little bit of planning, with a little bit of thought, it, you know, and it's not more difficult than putting some glucose tablets in your wetsuit or jacket or whatever it is. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so it takes a little bit more planning, but that's two minutes. And we can all afford to spend two minutes just remembering if we have glucose tablets or gels with us. So anything is possible. Yeah. And then totally. the third... The third thing that is what I'm really work. I, so I am working on something at the moment, and that is I just see that I have better control when I when I reduce the amount of carbs I'm eating. So I'm not talking no carbs or just eating salad, but just trying to manage that a bit tighter. Uh, and I see that I get much better control. So I think it's important to try to reduce the amount of carbs that we're eating. To a, a reasonable level it's different for all of us you can figure it out yourselves for me i try to do about 30 grams of carbs per meal i'm not perfect i some screw it up but that has been a good thing for me in trying to keep my diabetes in check i like it those are great tips so awesome no they're great they're perfect and i couldn't agree more i could 
expound on all of them uh, <laughs> way too much, so I won't. But um, so as usual, John's going to give me links um, where you can find whatever he wants you to find, whether it's Time Slin or anything to follow you on Twitter. Um, he'll send those to me. They'll be posted below the YouTube video and also below the video on my blog. Is there anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Yeah, I, I would just say one thing. I mean, you, uh, you know, we run a small business trying to make life easier for, for, for those of us with diabetes. It's so hard to bring innovation to healthcare and to medical devices and for people with diabetes. You know, we see 93% of people using insulin have this problem, and it is so difficult to get, a, get the products out. So I just think it's super important that people support you know, not only time slim what we're doing, but little companies trying to make a difference. Because if we don't, you know, our, our medical devices are going to keep looking like Game Boys from the 19, early 1990s. They're not going to look like iPhones. You need smart people who are innovating, doing it, and supporting them. So, I, you know, I really, in, in, every, in, in people's own way, try to help support the young entrepreneurs, the young scientists trying to make a difference. Because that's how cool things start bubbling up. And if it's happening in software, it's happening in apps, it's happening to taxis with Uber, why isn't it happening to our healthcare? So support young entrepreneurs, buy the products, fund you know, Kickstarter campaigns or Indiegogo campaigns, support innovation. I totally agree. And I'm, I'm grateful for Kickstarter. And I couldn't agree with more. I had a successful Kickstarter campaign myself for my book back in July. Thank you, everybody who is supporting, you know, young entrepreneurs, because that's me too, although I'm not in the tech business. I mean, I started my business six years ago from scratch um, with nothing else. And um, no, I totally agree. It's kind of like the mom and pop mentality. It's like support the young individuals who are doing stuff and not the giant you know, people who are putting out, and not that I, again, this is not a dig at Omnipod. I love my Omnipod, but this looks like a Blackberry from like 1990. And I would like to have a touch screen. So yeah, absolutely. So cool. So thank you so much for joining us from Sweden. Great. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's been my pleasure. And uh, if that'll be all, then we will see you on the next episode of Unleash Your Inner Diabetes Dominator. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.